So it's like being able to sort of customize your ringtone? <laughs> it's, it's the really long, slow, customized rings. <laughs>
on a piece of nitinol wire that's inside of here. And when that heats up, it contracts and gives us a small mechanical trigger um, that we can synchronize the clock to. So this was the prototype that we were using just to figure out how to how the focal length of the lens worked, how much energy we could get out of that system. And it turns out it works quite well. This is a prototype of the chime mechanism. This will ring this series of 10 bells in a different sequence each day for 10,000 years. So this computer will generate uh, over three and a half million combinations of ringing these bells in order. And Brian Eno and Danny Hillis came up with the algorithm and then um, building this machine became uh, Paulo Salvagioni and Greg Staples and Chris Rand's task to make it in a physical version that could ring all those bells. And we have a set of Tibetan bowl gongs that, on the other side that, uh, that we use for the, the audio return. So it's like being able to sort of customize your ringtone? <laughs> it's the really long, slow, customized rings. Tell me a little bit about the mechanics here. This is just unbelievably intricate. It looks almost like a car transmission. It looks complicated, but it's actually fairly simple. It's the same parts repeated over and over again. And in, in each one, it has a set of Geneva mechanisms um, which give you a, a small angular change for a constant rotation. So each time one of this goes around, the Geneva just turns a little bit on the other side. This would ring uh, once a day when uh, people come to visit the clock. What's it like to sort of do this and know that you're not going to be around to sort of uh you're not going to be the Maytag repairman for this thing. If, if somebody calls, you're not going to be there to answer the phone. Right. The 10,000-year service contract is certainly the uh, the real item to sell on the project, I suppose. <laughs> but the uh, you know we're trying to make it as easy on those future generations as possible. And you know we have some examples of of certainly of buildings like the pyramids and Stonehenge and and other large uh, objects that have lasted kind of on this time scale, but nothing with moving parts. So we're cutting new territory in that sense.